transformations of complex numbers. In this example, we're looking at multiplication, which involves rotation and scaling. We're asked to find out what transformation would map Z1 and Z2 onto Z3 and Z4. Well, if Z1 is mapped onto Z3, what we would notice is that Z1 and Z3 have the same argument. They're in the same line when we join them up towards the uh, zero. Also, that Z2 and Z4 have the same argument. So there is no rotation as Z1 maps to Z3 or as Z2 maps to Z4. However, we do notice that there is a scaling. We can see that the modulus of Z1 is twice as big as the modulus of Z3. Also, the modulus of Z2 is twice as big as the modulus of Z4. We can see that with a compass. We could also work this out because there are numbers given to each of these. However, because there is no rotation and there is a scale factor of a half, the moduluses have been reduced by a half, we could say that the mapping is a half of Z1 and Z2 would give us Z3, Z4. So if we multiply Z1, Z2 by a half, it would map on to Z3 and Z4. This is a geometric approach to the problem. There is another approach that you could take. Once you understand that this transformation is multiplication, that Z3 is some multiple of Z1, well then we could say that K, that this multiple, would be Z3 divided by Z1. So we could use the numbers available in the Argon diagram. Z3 we see is negative 1 plus 2i. Z1 is negative 2 plus 4i. We might notice that if we factorize the denominator here, factorize Z1, it can be written as 2 times negative 1 plus 2i. We notice that there's a common factor here. So dividing above and below by negative 1 plus 2i, we can see that k is equal to a half the same answer we got before. So the multiplier of transformation is a half. In part two, we're asked to describe the transformation that maps Z1 onto Z5 and Z2 onto Z6. Let's look at Z1 and Z5. We can see that there is different arguments for each of these complex numbers. So there must be a rotation that maps Z1 onto Z5. There's a rotation involved because the arguments are different. If we think about the moduli or the size of these complex numbers, we could see using a compass that they're exactly the same length, that both Z1 and Z5 have the same length, but there is a 90 degree angle between them. There is a rotation in the clockwise direction of 90 degrees. Now let's also look at what would map Z2 onto Z6. Does it follow the same rule? We can see, yes, it looks like a 90 degree angle. And we can see that the modulus of Z2 and Z6 are the same. So let us try to describe the transformation that takes place here. What about its rotation and scale factor? We can see, firstly, that there is a rotation of 90 degrees in the clockwise direction. To cause this rotation, you would multiply either by i three times, but i to the power of three is the same thing as negative i. So what would cause a rotation of 90 degrees in the clockwise direction is when you multiply by negative i. Let's think about the scale factor. Well, there is no enlargement happening, so therefore the scale factor is one the moduli have not increased or decreased. So if we multiply Z1 and Z2 by negative i, it should map onto Z5 and Z6. I have taken a geometric approach to answering this question. You could also use, however, the numbers available in the Argon diagram. So if you understand that there is multiplication involved here, we could say that Z5 is some multiple of Z1. Let's call that multiple K. 
So k must be equal to z5 divided by z1, k being our transformation multiplier. z5 in the argon diagram is 4 plus 2i. z1 is negative 2 plus 4i. To divide by a complex number, what we would do is multiply above and below by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of negative 2 plus 4i is negative 2 minus 4i. So we'll multiply above and below by this. So this gives us, along the top line, we're going to multiply 4 by negative 2, 4 by negative 4i, 2i by negative 2, 2i by negative 4i. Underneath, we have the difference of two squares. So this becomes negative 2 to be squared minus negative 4i to be squared. Now just neatening this up, we see we have a negative 8 and a positive 8. So that they cancel out, giving 0. And we end up with negative 16i, negative 4i, which is negative 20i. Underneath the line, we end up with 4 minus negative 16, which becomes 20 altogether. And we see that negative i is the solution, the same as we got before. So whichever of the approaches you prefer to this question, the important learning here is to understand that multiplication is a transformation that involves scaling and rotation.